What's going on everyone? I'm John from Hobbyist PCs and today I'm going to be going over a little tutorial showing you guys how to set up Reaper. Now Reaper is a digital audio workstation, also known as a DAW. You'll probably hear it being called that in the audio space. And it's primarily used for recording and editing music projects, uh, voiceovers, anything that involves editing audio whatsoever. You can do that within Reaper. One of the beautiful things about Reaper is that it's fairly inexpensive to use, especially if you're not making a ton of income off of your projects or if you're just doing it for fun. And at the same time, it's very powerful. It can do a lot with this particular DAW that you would normally not be able to do with some of, I would say, the more expensive DAWs that are out there. I guess the best comparison I can make with Reaper is that it pretty much competes in a way with Pro Tools on that level, I'd say. Now it is an open source program, therefore it usually tends to be modded by a lot of people, which can be a good or a bad thing. And it's cheaper price tends to show itself in terms of the quality of the UI at times. So in that respect, it does have a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get past some of those hurdles, it's actually incredibly easy to use. Now in this video, I'm just gonna show you guys how to get it set up so that you can do voiceover work. I'm not gonna show you guys how to set it up, for example, um, recording a, a band. So if you have multiple microphones that you wanna record it with, one time i'm just going to focus on just voiceovers and just kind of giving you the basic setup so that way you can get going with it or maybe you can use it for uh testing your microphone to try to get a good sound out of it if you've seen any of my previous videos you know exactly what i'm talking about all right guys now that that's out of the way why don't we go ahead and jump right into it all right started things off i'm at the website i'm at uh, reaper.fm it's not .com, guys. If you type in .com, you're going to get a, a totally different website. Now, I want to just go over a couple of quick things about Reaper, just so you know, uh, going into it. You can technically use this program for free. They have a free trial of the program that allows you full access to the entire DAW. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that you own it. Unfortunately, because it is a trial version, if you were to, for example, uh, start doing projects and profiting off your projects that you do within Reaper, uh, if Reaper were to find out, for example, it would be considered unlicensed use of the product and you could technically face litigation for it. And just to kind of go over the different versions you can buy, you can see that you can buy the discounted license for $60 and there really isn't much to it. You just have to simply make under a certain income. You can read through it. It says right here, you may use the discounted license if you are an individual and Reaper is only for your personal use or you are an individual or business using Reaper commercially and yearly gross revenue does not exceed USD $20,000 or you are an educational or nonprofit organization. Therefore, you can purchase the discount of license. Otherwise, you do have to pay the $225. However, when you compare the price of digital audio workstations nowadays to the price that they're offering, the commercial license really still isn't that much. To put it in perspective, Pro Tools is like an $800 program and you don't even technically own it anymore. You can only like go on a subscription plan from what I recall. But of course, you can go ahead and you can download and try this for as long as you want to. I personally tried it for about a few months and after using it for a few months, I started to really like it and I actually ended up getting the discounted license. And I use Reaper to handle some of the stuff going on with the videos. I, I usually use the plugins inside of it and that's one of the reasons why I like Reaper so much. So whatever your reason is, if you end up liking Reaper, I highly suggest that after you you give the trial a go that you consider purchasing it to support it. Now, if you want to download it, you simply just want to click the download Reaper icon up here. You want to pick your platform and just download the installer. I already have it installed right now, so I'm not going to go through the trouble, but it's just a simple install process. It's going to ask you if you want to install certain plugins. I suggest installing them. And just, just because it's, in my opinion, when it comes to a DAW, it's better to have the extra features than to not have them at all and then maybe need them later down the road. So even if you end up, never end up using those plugins ever, you might as well have them in your library anyway. All right, I'm at a desktop now. I'm just going to go ahead and open up Reaper. But here we are. We've got a, a blank project. You'll be greeted with a, if you got the If you got the free trial version, you'll be greeted with a window telling you that you are on a tr free trial version. Uh, if, if you simply have to wait for a little countdown timer on the lower right-hand corner to tick down to zero before you can close the window out. And that's just, that's just something I want to make you aware of in case you see that window one day and you're wondering if you're ever going to be able to use the program. You just simply wait for the countdown timer. You do have to click on the window in order for the timer to start counting down. But once the timer reaches zero, you can go ahead and you close that window out and you can continue using Reaper. So what we're going to do here first is I'm just going to go over some really basic setup. I'm going to show you guys how to get your sound card set up for this so that you can start recording voiceovers. And it's a fairly simple process to do. All you have to do to get started with setting up Reaper first, what I would suggest that you do, you want to find out 
what your sample rate on your system is, and you also want to find out what your bit rate is as well. I'll show you guys how we can do that. And we've been through this step many times in many other videos, but it's it's something that I think would benefit you to know. You want to right click on the on the speaker icon on the desktop, then you want to choose the sounds option. From there, you want to head over to either the playback or the recording tab. I would start with the playback to, to because that's going to be your main listening device. And in my case, I'm using the focus right USB. So I want to right click on that, go to properties. This might be different for some of you guys. You might end up using speaker, real tech. Um, you might end up using like some other device, whatever it is that you're using to listen to your audio, whatever your main sound card is, that's what you want to choose here. And you want to take a look and see what it can actually, it can actually do. But you want to head over to advanced. And from here, you can see that there are some options. There's a little drop down menu and Right now I'm set to 16 bit 48,000 Hertz. Now that's just for the main, that's just for the main desktop. Normally when I'm, when I'm streaming or if I'm just like playing games, I keep it at 16 bit. When I'm doing projects, I'm actually doing 24 bit because my interface is capable of handling up to 32 bit float. Now 24 bit is usually sufficient enough. Even 16 bit is usually fine. I would recommend that if you have 24 bit available that you set you set Reaper to using 24 bit in your projects. However, in this case, you can see that we're at 48 K 48,000 Hertz. This is the one that you have to make absolutely sure is set the same as your sound card when you do your project. And it, it has a lot to do with like listening purposes. And it also has to do with the way that the pro the, the audio is recorded. If you, for example, recorded some audio at 44.1 K, which is CD quality. That's, that's a common sample rate that a lot of, a lot of things use these days, but a lot of people are starting to move towards 48,000. If you were to take that 41, 44.1 sample rate file and move it into 48,000, then it's not going to play back correctly. It might play back slower or faster. And it has to do with the way that sample rate works. I'm not going to get too deep into what sample rate is. I'll talk to you guys about it in a separate video because it's something that warrants that kind of discussion. But for now, just keep in mind that whatever your, your sound card is set to here, that's what you're going to want to set your project to. And the same thing is going to apply for your recording device. If you go to the recording tab, I'm also using Focusrite USB. You want to go to properties, go to advanced, and then you can see that I'm at 24 bit 48,000. Usually I would recommend setting it to whatever your microphone is set to. Um, but, but by all means, you know, don't, don't feel like you need to have it set at 16 bit or 24 bit. I, I would recommend just getting your bit rate as high as you can. All right. So now here we are on the project. We're going to go ahead and we're going to look in the options tab and we want to go all the way down to preferences. This is a fairly quick setup guys. The main one that you're probably going to be concerned with here or focused on is the wave out audio system. You're going to be greeted with many different choices for audio systems. And if you're just doing voiceover work, just using wave out is going to be just fine. Now, in this case, you can see that I've got my sample rate set to 24 bits, my sample format. In that case, that's that's the bit rate. And then we've got our sample rate set to 48,000. So you want to make sure that this is fine. If you if you have your set to 44.1, you're going to want to come down here. And you're going to want to type 44 point. Actually, sorry, you want you want to type in 44100. That's that's what 44.1 stands for, 44.1 thousand. So that's if you're using that sample rate on your sound card or your microphone. In our case, we're using 48,000. So we're going to want to go ahead and type in uh, 48,000. And also, you know, I could go ahead and set this to 32 bit if I want to. It's mostly just for editing purposes. Uh, when I mix it down, I'm probably going to mix it down into 16 bit, possibly 24 bit. It depends on what I'm doing with it. But the last thing you're probably going to want to do here is you're going to want to set your input and your output device. This is probably just the, this is really the most important thing that you need to do here. Uh, your input device is going to be, for example, your microphone. If you're going to be capturing audio for voiceovers, you're going to want to make sure that you, the correct device is selected. Now, if you're using a headset mic, you're probably going to need to locate that headset within this list and you're going to want to choose that. In my case, I'm using the Focusrite audio interface, so I'm going to choose Focusrite USB. As for the output device, I'm using the exact same thing. Now, all I have to do is just go to my output device list, look for what I want. As you can see, I got Realtek on here. I've got speakers. For most of you guys using the Realtek uh, sound card, you're probably going to want to choose the one that says speakers most of the time or headset, whatever it is that you have plugged in. That's going to be your main sound card. Don't go to the one that says Realtek digital audio output. That's for, I think that's for optical. So you don't want to use this one right here. You want to use the one that's either labeled speakers or headphones, depending on what you're using. In my case, I'm using 
the USB audio interface, so I'm going to go with the Focusrite USB. And lastly, if you want to go ahead and try this, if you're experiencing a lot of issues of playback, one thing I would highly suggest is that you go down to your audio thread priority and you want to set that to highest. It's not something that I would say is required. Most people are just fine setting it to normal, but if you are running into playback issues where you're getting a lot of static and popping when you hit a playback and it doesn't quite sound right, that is if you're not having an issue with your microphone, then you can come down here and try setting it to highest to see if that helps leverage the CPU a little more the way in a way that helps uh, the, with the playback and helps play it back a little smoother. From here, I want to just go ahead and click OK, and then we're basically all set with setup. Now, what you're probably going to want to know is how to add tracks, because when you do some recording, you need to add tracks, because this project file right now has absolutely no tracks whatsoever, so we can't do any recording. You want to go ahead and on the left-hand side, and you want to right-click, choose Insert New Track. And you, you don't even have to just do that. If you want to record multiple different tracks, you can go down Insert Multiple Tracks, and you can specify what those are. But for now, we're just going to add one. From here, you know, to, to get going, Going with recording with the wave out selected it's only going to use that one input device for every single track if we were using uh, a different audio interface we're recording multiple tracks at once we would have to go in and specify on each track which microphone it's going to be using but since we only have one device to worry about we're just gonna we don't all we have to do here is just hit this little record button right over here that arms the track and makes it ready to record you can see that right now i've got my decibel meter bouncing up and down telling me what my levels are like that's a really good way to test and see if your levels are good for your microphone going in and then when you're ready to start recording all you have to do is go down here to the to the transport and this is where you can go ahead you can you can hit play you can stop the recording you can you can skip through it you can pause it all you have to do is you hit this record button it's going to start recording and as you can see you, you see these waveforms it, it's it's showing in real time as you're recording and after it's done when you're when you're ready to finish recording you can either hit space bar or you can just click the stop button down below and then from there it's going to ask you if you want to save the files or delete them in this case we're just going to go ahead and save and now we have a file that is usable. Now this headset is plugged right into my interface. I forgot to put it on, but I didn't really need it. And we're just gonna listen back to the playback. From here, you know, we don't have to worry about this being unarmed when we play it back. We can leave it armed, but if you have multiple tracks that are armed and you hit record and you start recording the track you don't intend to, just keep track of what is armed for recording when you're doing recordings. So we just wanna go ahead and just listen back to it. And as you can see, you see these waveforms. It's it's showing in real time as you're recording. And after it's done, when you're when you're ready to finish, and I think you guys get the point at this point. Now there are more things that you can do as well. If you wanted to add another track, we could right click and we could insert a new track. And let's say that maybe you had some footage that you wanted to add into the project. Maybe you wanted to add some music. Uh, I have like an entire folder just full of backing tracks that that I can use as an example here. You can simply just go right into your file. You can just drag it right into the project. Just like this. And now you have a music track to go with it. We can go ahead and hit play and listen to that. And as you can see, you, you see these waveforms. It, it's, it's showing in real time as you're recording. And after it's done, when you're when you're I think you get the idea. That's really all you need to know as far as setting up Reaper. There really isn't much to it. So go out there, just start recording your projects and enjoy this wonderful piece of software. I love it. And that just about wraps up this tutorial, guys. I hope it was helpful for you and I hope that the setup process of setting up Reaper becomes a lot less of a headache for some of you guys. I know it could be a little intimidating at first, but once you get it figured out, it's it's actually a wonderful program to use, especially for some of you guys who maybe wanna just record sound effects. Maybe you wanna chop up some audio from your stream or something like that. Maybe you just wanna use some plugins to improve your audio. There are a lot of uses that you can get out of Reaper. So if this fits your needs, and if there's any way I could have done this tutorial, please be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful, please be sure to like and share with your friends. And of course, just to get the formalities out of the way, down below there'll be links to my various social media pages, the merch page, the Discord channel, as well as a link to my Twitch page where I stream twice a week. The Twitch page is a great place to go if you just want to just have conversations with me about tech or if you want to ask me tech-based questions or if you just want to go in and just, just you know, talk talk about video games or if you just want to talk about whatever and just hang out i'm also a big music fan so if you want to go in and talk about music i'm i'm always down with that too and of course if you want to stay up to date with everything going on in the hobbies pc's youtube page please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications you'll be notified anytime we update to the channel i appreciate you guys taking the time to check this video out and i hope it was helpful thank you so much for watching